So we're going to finish up some of that respiratory stuff. Uh, we're also going to talk about, uh, we're going to hit the end of that other lecture. We're talking about some abdominal pain, psych patients, some of those things, uh, to fill these next few hours. Not a whole lot left in this airway thing. A couple things to clarify for you guys. Uh, one of the things, uh, so we didn't really talk about it uh, the last time, but measuring for tracheal suctioning uh, in regards to soft suction down the ET tube. Uh, so the measurement we are going to go with to establish the length of your suction catheter is the length of your stylet. Okay, so that is there. So there are across all the different books that are out there and stuff. There are multiple different ways to measure. Okay, but what we are going to go with is we are going to go with the length of your stylet is the length that we are measuring our soft suction catheter. Okay. Make sense? Cool. Just like there's a hundred different ways to measure OPAs, FPAs, but we're all coming down with one answer, right? Okay. The other thing is, is one of your skill sheets talks about hyperventilating a patient before you intubate them. We do not hyperventilate patients. What we do is we hyperoxygenate patients, okay? So we are eliminating the thought process. So basically anytime you see hyperventilation in any of these kind of skill sheet things, we're just taking that and we're kind of throwing that out the window, okay? So the idea is, is we're just hyper oxygenating, okay? So we're not increasing the bagging because what happens when we increase our bagging and we start bagging faster? What do we do? We're gonna decrease our uh, CO2. Right, we're gonna, we're gonna start decreasing our CO2 and we're gonna start Ended up with these abnormal, abnormality irregularities, right? Which we don't want to happen with somebody that is already in a critical medical state, right? So we're gonna try and keep things as close as possible. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna just hyper oxygenate. We're gonna just keep the normal rate of ventilations and we're just gonna make sure that we increase our oxygen percentage that we're giving them, right? And we do that by using what devices? BVM, BVM, non-rebreathers, right? So the question came up in one, I don't even remember who asked it. Uh, you don't have to volunteer the information, whoever it was. Um, but somebody says, hey, uh, talking about BVM, they're like, oh, hey, and, and yeah, we would, do we, should we hook that up to oxygen? It's like, so in that skill sheet, it talks about, oh, we're gonna grab, we're gonna grab our BVM and immediately start bagging, right? In real life, that's not what we do. Right? In real life, what we do is we grab the BVM, we plug it into oxygen, and then we start ventilating, right? So just assume every time that you're using a BVM, you're gonna have it hooked to oxygen. All right? So 15 liters a minute, keeping that reservoir full to get that full 100% oxygen, right? Because that's what we need to get the highest percentage of oxygen, right? Right. Yeah. Agreed? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Cool. All right, so does that make sense, everybody? Everybody tracking why we're, where we're going with all that stuff? All right. Oh, about halfway done with that can. This is gonna be a fun one. Here we go. It'll kick in soon. It's good, and we're gonna get we're gonna get cooking. All right, not gonna be able to sleep tonight, but hey, that's all right. Eight-year-old skateboard accident. No helmet. The kid is unconscious in the cardiac posture. What do you guys want to know? Level of responsiveness. Unconscious. Uh. Cardiac posture. Any eye movement? No. How long is he going any, to Any sounds, mo, mo, mumbles, moans? No, nope, nope. snoring respirations. Is at pulse? about, I'm going to say respirations at about 40. Deep and rapid. Yeah. Oh, it sounds really close to that. Close the airway. Uh, Get a airway. pulse. Okay, airways are open. Yep, you can see it here. <laughs> any other? Uh, sounds very regular. Over and over and over so and over. Oh man, I like where you're thinking. Okay. <laughs> Any other life threats that we see? Uh, no, no massive, obvious bleeding. Nothing major. You see this kid that's unconscious. Everybody know what the cord the corticate posturing is? Into the cord. Boom! They're bringing everything in, right? So it's coming up. Good or bad? Bad. bad. How bad? Not as bad as the cerebrate. Not as bad as the cerebrate. <laughs> But anytime you got a kid that's decorated get posturing, that's bad. He's already right? like GCS scores. GCS is less than eight. GCS is less than eight means what? In a bay. Oh, sweet. So, you guys want to innovate? Yeah. yeah. You guys are dialed. You guys are paramedics now, right? 
So we're moving on to, to innovation. <laughs> see, yeah. I see a little what? Broken teeth or anything like that. Oh man, yeah. So we got all the, we got we got to do our whole airway breathing circulation assessment, right? So the good thing is you guys are so awesome at multitasking and we've gotten so good at it. You guys have come to the conclusion, boom, we need to innovate. Right, stats are in the 70s, it's just irregular, can't protect his own airway, he tried an OPA, patient did not accept the OPA, so what's that mean? RSI. RSI. He's got a gag reflex, right? Mm -hmm. So can we just throw an ET tube down somebody that has an intact gag reflex? Mm -hmm. No. No. So we get the RSI, right? What's RSI stand for? Uh, rapid rapid sequence. Sequence. Yeah. That would be yeah. nice if it was rapid, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just quickly looking some of this stuff, I mean, preparation 10 minutes, it's definitely gonna take you guys the whole 10 minutes. I mean, because you guys are new, you guys are trying to figure things out, trying to figure out what drugs to go with. Uh, pre oxygenate, uh, it's, it's not a hyperventilate, it's a pre oxygenate, okay? Five minutes of that, okay? So that's gonna take you guys a while to figure out where your BBM is and how to hook it up and get all that stuff. Uh, and then three minutes, oh wait, before we can even do this, back in this preparation, this 10 minutes, what all is involved in that preparation? You gotta get an IV oh, man. or yes. some kind of access. IVIO. Yeah, can we can we uh, can we do a RSI IM? No. A, yes. Let her know that her yeses. Oh, I like this. Yes, like yes, it. yes like but yes, yes, yeah, green. Green. Yeah. yeah, but it takes more meds and longer. Yeah. So yes, you can RSI somebody with uh, IM. It takes forever. You have no real patent IV, and the cool thing is, is we have IOs now. If you guys are at your current IV skill level, aren't able to get the IOs. Ouch. Uh, I mean, the truth hurts, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, you guys are getting better, you guys are uh, really improving. I just want you guys to know that. Um, so anyways, so, I mean, just to throw this out there, I sucked at IVs when I started, and Derek can vouch for that, 100%. Uh, I wasn't well, very good either. Yeah, because really he, he was my preceptor. He I taught me what I knew, it. and that's why I was bad. I couldn't get it unless I saw it. I couldn't feel it and get it. Hey, that's my problem. Let's talk. <laughs> right. Okay. So yeah. So all this pre preparation is is you're getting your suction ready. You're getting your extra tubes ready. You're getting your backup device. You're getting everything ready. So all that takes time. So the the fact that you have to make that determination very early on of yes, I'm going to innovate this person gets a whole lot of things started in motion. So this is where like when you're talking about the the crike in somebody, if you're thinking about crike. You, you're, you're already behind, right? You should have already cracked this person if you're thinking about getting to crack. So this is kind of that thing where it's like, if you're starting to think of innovation, you needed to start the process way beforehand, okay? Because it does, it is not rapid. There's nothing rapid about it until you've been doing it for maybe, I don't know, 10 years, five years, five years. You can probably pull it off in five years. Uh, did you need something? I'm getting ready to quit right now. <laughs> I'm going to walk away. What's inside? It's Finish your bang first. <laughs> roll sheet. Not roll sheet, but requires your signature. Roll sheet. Not roll sheet, but requires your signature. Sign that you know when you're going to show up tomorrow. It's all randomized. I don't care when you come, but you will come when it says. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to come when it says, perfect, trade with somebody. I don't care. If you trade with somebody, sign and put their name, and they sign and put your name, so that I know that that trade happened. So we have even numbers in each of the slots. And the slots are 730 to 845 and 815 to 930. So you're not saving a whole lot of time. You are still responsible for 730 to 930 throughout the year, because there are times, like on next Tuesday, that we'll meet the entire time. Yes? Yes. Nothing's new about this, right? Roll. And that you know when you're supposed to show up tomorrow. Yeah. Is that going to be the same every Thursday? I, I'm not going to change this ever. I'm just going to hand it out. If you want to come at the other time, find somebody who's willing to trade with you for those days that we have it split. Good? Good. Who's missing in this room right now? Me. Hey. Besides Chris. Sure. Jeanette. Who's Jeanette. friend is not here? Janae. She's, she's oh, sick. that's right, because she said, somebody <coughs> tell her, look at her name, and then you text her and tell her when she's supposed to be there, if she's well. She's like, you know her. she's like dying. She has her number. Yeah. She has her I think she's white. <laughs> <laughs> you are now in charge of 
Mexico. Mexico. That's the best song is. Yeah. Sick button. Boom. Yeah, sorry. Not gonna make it any sense. Best call is like, hey, Chief, how's it going? Oh, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, what can I do for you? I'm going in sick today. Cool. Okay. All right. I have nothing left to say. All right, cool. So don't accept your resignation is not acceptable. <laughs> okay, again. I was gonna use all of them as proof and just be like, no. Okay. Okay, so uh, back to preparation. So what all do we need to do to RSI somebody? What stuff do we need to get accomplished? What do we need? IV. 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 IO possibly. Okay. Just IV. access. So we Hyper oxygenate, so some kind of GLA system to... Okay, well what do you want to do if you're going to RSI somebody? So you, there's, we, we have we want nasal cannula. We need a BVM running. BVM, we want a BVM, okay. BVM With O2. Yeah. Alright, so remember we're just lumping O2 and BBMs in together. We want our Long. suction ready. Suction. We want our drugs ready. Pre-Medicaid. Oh man, pre-Medicaid. So we got drugs down here. So we'll get to drugs eventually. You guys are a little bit away from that still. So we need we're just uh, our equipment ready. We're not even into putting this equipment into service yet. So, so on that IV, uh, hang a bag. <clears throat> Hang a bag with uh, uh, macro drip that has uh, med ports. Yeah. Eight rolls. What? Eight rolls. Eight. Yes, eight rolls. Eight. Eight two. Okay. Oh man. Let's say eight two. We will go with with an eight year old. Oof. So many different things. Get our Braslow tape out. Braslow tape is your friend, right? So eight two. What else? Suction. Suction. Blades. Oh, there you go, suction. Tricky. <laughs> Tricky. I, I mean, I can just keep reading this over and over and over. What's the last one say? Laryngoscope. Laryngoscope. Or Larry. Larry. Larry the Alright, anything else? Uh, capnography. Do know what that is? Secondary? Secondary what? Capnography. Okay, yeah. You know, we can get our color metric on there too. You know what secondary means? Secondary, secondary confirmation. To what? Yeah. Uh, second line. Oh, our backup in case we fail. There you go. Our secondary device. We have our secondary device if our first right? device fails. You guys are awesome at your skills, but I mean, this is part of that checklist that you got to go through. Uh, I don't doubt that you're going to be able to innovate this person, but you need your what? King. What you use? King. Okay. Wait, why are you saying the capnography has something to, like, to, 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 to do with the king? No, 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 no. Secondary no, no. device, they're available. Correct. Yes. Well, yeah, but in this case, would king be an appropriate one if it's got a gag reflex? Or we're gonna we already are. We're, we're, we're ISI. We're getting rid of that gag reflex, yeah. right? So we're using our neuromuscular medication and we're eliminating that, right? Right. Okay. So do we have everything we need to RSI this person? No. We got our IV, we oh, got oh, our... I got to know. So what do we need? Section. We need our drugs. Oh, we still need drugs. Okay. Well, I mean, well, all this preparation stuff. How do you guys feel? you guys feel confident about this kid? RSI in him? We need parent permission. He's very responsive. We need parent permission. What? Implied consent. Implied consent. This kid is going to die unless you do something. But hey, if you want to make the phone call and be like, hey... Well, his parents are right there. Yep. How are they? This could be a skateboard, skateboard accident. Skateboard accident, man. All Not kids, all kids go to the park. <laughs> with, 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 with their parents. <laughs> I do like. I, do, I like the idea that the thought process. Because yes, technically under fifteen. Yeah. 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 Y
Does anybody hesitate on the MPA? Yeah. Oh, we got a couple. Why? Well, okay, do they have facial trauma? We don't know. All right, so this is one of those things that you're gonna you're gonna check. Like, so you throw this kind of stuff out there, and you're just like, okay, do I see any possibilities of any sort of uh, facial, skull fractures, anything like that, any signs of uh, anything that would contraindicate my MPA, right? So you got your MPA and you got your OPA as well, right? But well, we've got a gag so, reflex. So, but you got it ready, right? Correct. Right, because what's going to happen once you start paralyzing? And we're going to lose the gag reflex. And, and, and you, and you, so, so see, you're starting to eliminate stuff. So you always want to have that stuff available. So let's say you're not totally, because once you start to put somebody under, you start to make them unconscious. They're going to start to accept the OPA. Maybe you have time to drop an OPA for a little while and free oxygenate with that OPA while everybody's getting ready. It's like, all right, we've got our meds drawn up. We're getting ready to go here, OK? Because once you start this process, you got this three minute buffer of medications that we're gonna give that's gonna buy you a little bit of time where, all right, I can't get paralytics for a little while because I gotta let this other medications uh, work, okay? So we got all this stuff so far. Are we ready to innovate yet? We get SPO2 along with our capnography. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna say it's 77%. Mm. Stethoscope. EP, so, so the vitals. Yeah. All right, vitals, uh, so the vitals are Eight-year-old with a blood pressure of 180 over 115, mm. a heart rate of 45. So I'm throwing out all kinds of numbers that you guys aren't totally going to understand quite yet. But I'm just, just I'm painting this picture of this kid's got a head injury. Okay, he's got a closed head injury. ICP is going on, right? Increased cranial pressure. Increased intracranial pressure. Okay. What's that? No. No. Nope. Nope. Nope, nope, none of that stuff. We've done an amazing quick rapid trauma assessment. The only thing's wrong is we think this kid's got a head injury. That kid's got a head injury and we need to RSI this person because we got bad stats, kid's cortical posturing, not protecting his own airway. We got a suction a couple times, we're gonna say. All right, so are we ready to pull the trigger? Are we ready uh, to do this? I want my, uh, well, my suctioning for my uh, tube as well. Yeah, okay, we'll just say that's all inclusive. Great. You have every section. You need PPE and a securing device for the ET tube, and he said stethoscope. Securing device. Okay, stethoscope, good. Yep, PPE. Okay, so we're going to roll in prepared to every call, right? So we got our PPE on already. The securing device for the ET. I'm just kidding. You're doing it. Oh, okay. Classic. 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 Okay. Jeez. They know uh, okay, so are we, are we getting close? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Oh, thank you. Fine. Thank you. Somebody's ready to just do this. Let's see, that took, oh, yeah, it took about almost 10 minutes to get there. Okay, so now we're at 10 minutes so far. So we're right on par for our preparation, right? Because that was just talking about it. Like, that's not getting everything out and actually hooking everything up, getting everything set. Pre oxygenate, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna bag, right? Doing our uh, hyper oxygenation. High flow oxygen this is one of those cases where you might have to bump it up like we talked about over the 15 liters a minute just to keep that bag inflated. All right, so we got an eight-year-old. What meds are we going to give? Pre-medication? Suck. So we, so we got a pre-medicate section here, huh? That seems like maybe there should be something there then, right? Ketamine? All right, so. This right here is your pre-medication, you got this zero to three minutes. That zero to three minutes should cue you into certain types of medication. So in our pre-medication list, we have two different pre-medications. Well, actually, we've got a couple pre-medications before we hit the paralysis. So pre-medications, we have lidocaine, we have fentanyl, we have tomidate, We yeah, have ketamine. All right, so those are our pre-meds. So I heard somebody say atropine. Atropine is no longer in the pre-medication thing. They've done away with it. Um, so these are our pre-meds. Do we get them all? No. 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 
Okay? So each one has a specific type of criteria that we're going to use for. Okay? So with our lidocaine, do we know our lidocaine dose? 1.5 1.5 mix per kg. 1.5 milligrams per kilo. Okay? Do we know our fentanyl dose? 3 milligrams per kilogram. 3 micrograms. 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 No. Fentanyl? It's like 25 milligrams per kilogram. 50. We're all, over the place. We're, all over. we're all over the place. We're all over the place. All right, here we go. Three mics per kilo. Okay, so, so far we've got lidocaine and fentanyl. These are our pre pre meds, okay? So, our pre medications. So, you have to give lidocaine three minutes prior to giving either your automate and or your ketamine, okay? So you really have to be on the ball, and this is for head injured patients. ICP, lidocaine and fentanyl are both for ICP. Okay? So those are the only times that you have to pre-medicate is if you suspect intracranial pressure. All right? So we have lidocaine and fentanyl. So we give our lidocaine. That's the first, first bet that goes in, because it has the longest duration to wait. Okay, it's got its three minutes. So you wait, you, you, as you're waiting during your three minutes, you're gonna draw up your fentanyl. Your three mics per kilo. So let's pick a let's pick a weight for this eight year old. How many people have? Does anybody in here have an eight year old? I do. Oh, how much does your eight year old weigh? About fifty three pounds. Fifty three pounds. Okay. So what do we do with fifty three pounds? Divide by two at minus ten percent. Fifty three pounds is an amazing number. Guess what? We're going with fifty three pounds because that's what we got. Twenty five minus two point five. Twenty three kilograms. Twenty three kilograms. Oh. Man, 23 kilograms, that is a crappy number. Push go 20? 20 kilograms. 20? Shoot high, 25. Ah, so you guys hear that shooting high, shooting low thing? So what I always try and do, which this is, a, this is a kind of crappy one because it's right at that 23, 25 range, right? So what I usually will try and do is I'll try and round everything to the zero. So it would either be 20 or 30 to make my math simple, right? But this one's on the low end. And do we have, if you're going to RSI, if you're going to paralyze, do you think you want to under-medicate or do you think you want to over-medicate? Over-medicate. Why would you want to over-medicate? Because you don't want to wear it off. You want to paralyze them, right? Can you over-paralyze somebody? No. Okay. So the idea is if you would normally go high, uh, with the fact that it's, so, it's on that low level, like at that 23, I would go ahead and I would keep it at the 25 kilos. Okay, so we're going 25 kilos. So, boom, we gotta go back here to 1.5 milligrams per kilo. No using <coughs> your phone, no using calculators. Three, Thirty-seven and a half. No. Thirty-seven and a half. Oh boy. Thirty-eight. What? 38. Oh, thank you. Thirty-eight. Thank you for Are we figuring out the doses? Thirty. Yeah. Dose of lidocaine. Dose of lidocaine. How much are we gonna give? Mutual agreement. Thirty-eight milligrams. Thirty-eight milligrams. How much? How many come in a syringe? One hundred and ten milliliters. How many milliliters can we give? One hundred ten milliliters. One hundred milligrams in ten milliliters. So, so, I'll get so that's going to be a third of that. Get 100 milligrams. 33. 10 milliliters. Okay, how many milligrams per milliliter? 10, 10, 10 megs per mil. Okay, and how much do we need? Three and a half. 38. So how many? 3.8. 3.8. There we go. Whew. All right, so we need 3.8 milligrams per milliliter. Simple, so simple math, right? I mean, you're not stressed at all trying to innovate an eight-year-old right now. Mom okay? and dad screaming. Mom screaming at you. We talk, yeah, you guys Save my baby! Remember? Who do, you, who do you deal with first? The mom, okay. right? Mom and dad. Did the mom and dad calm down first and then the kids, right? Uh, Would you just go up to 40 mils? Yes. Or four milliliters? Yeah. So, so with this case, it's 3.8. It is such a small thing on, on the syringe. I'm going to bump that to 4.0. Okay? Knowing, yes, it's supposed to be 3.8 in my head, but remember, every weight is an estimate already, okay? Unless you get 53 pounds thrown at you. You can be like, I don't agree with that, okay? I'm gonna say, based on my own 
visual appearance is 55 pounds. Okay, so uh, everything's a, a weight estimate. So I'm going with four mils. All right, so I'm going with 40. All right, so here we go now. Whew. That's five minutes just to get the lidocaine going now. All right, so now we got our lidocaine on board, but now so we got three minutes before we can get down to our paralytics. So in three minutes we gotta get our fentanyl drawn up, our terminate, our ketamine, and we gotta get our sex drawn up. So fentanyl, where are we at? How much? Three mics per kilo? Seventy-five. Or seventy-five. Mics. Seventy-five, 75 mics. mics. Seventy-five mics. Seventy-five mics. Everybody agree? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody disagree. Same 100 mils per 10? Nope. It is 100 mil, 100 micrograms in 2 milliliters. Oh, dude, math just got hard. One, one mil. So, you got, so that's going to give how much? It's going to give me 100, 100 mics. Okay. Nope. So it's 100 mics in 2 mils. Oh, it's going to give me 50. So one, so one and a half. So how much did we want to give again? 75. 75, so we're going to give 75 mics. 100 mics per 2 mils? So 1.5 mils. 1.5 is perfect. Okay, so we want 1.5 mils. Uh, mil. Cool. All right. Do we want to give that now? Yes. Yeah, yes. let's give it. All right, boom. It's in. Slow push. Why do we want to go slow? Because so they're, up. yeah, we don't want to throw up. And what do we want to not cause with fentanyl and rapid push? Rap respiratory de 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 depression. Depression. De depression. Oh, oh, the chest wall rigidity, right? Yeah, chest wall rigidity. Yeah. We, we, but the funny thing is, is, what do we do for chest wall rigidity? Paralyzed. Sucks. We give them sucks, right? So we're getting ready to give them sucks anyways. We're on the way. <laughs> but you just don't want to complicate things any more than what you already got, because then that's going to increase your pucker factor there for a little bit, and you're be like, oh, why not make it harder on me? Okay. Alright, so now we're down to Atomidate. Do we give Atomidate? No, it's already good blood. Oh, have you guys covered Atomidate? No. 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 Alright, you guys covered Ketamine? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. So what do, you know, what do we know about Ketamine then? Disassociative. What's the... Alright, so at this point, we have, have we sedated this person at all? No. 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 We've given a little bit of pain meds and we gave uh, the lidocaine for ICP. So at this point, we get to choose between atomidate or ketamine, one or the other. Is that fentanyl going to lower our respiratory rate? Not with this. Not no. with this? Not with this one. Okay. Like large, large doses, you may eventually hit the, some of the respiratory drive, but for the most part, okay. So we have to choose between atomidate and ketamine, okay? So ketamine is given in three cases. Okay, we choose, and this is our pre-medication prior to our sex. So this is kind of our sedative, causes the unconsciousness um, just prior to completely paralyzing somebody. So basically it's a, hey, I'm going to put you to sleep kind of thing uh, before I completely freak you out and take away your respiratory drive if you're conscious at all, right? So conscious unconsciousness. Um, and so ketamine, the three cases are, and you have any ideas? Pediatrics. Or They're allergic to atomidate. Good. Four. We're getting unconscious. I guess we're not four. Good. Uh, Hypersensitivity or allergy. That's a good one. We'll have to add that. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's three cases. Okay. Three cases we go with ketamine. First one is respiratory disease process. Okay. Which would be what type of diseases? COPD. COPD, right? Hopefully not. It's probably not eight year old. Okay. Probably not eight. Well, you never know. You okay. never know. Certain countries. Yep. Okay. So that's number one. Number two. <laughs> no. This is for uh, our side. Who got the gym one? This is the gym one. No. No. Yeah, good one. Is it an head injury? Acute low injury. Hypotension. Hypotension. Okay, and the third time we use ketamine for RSI is PD 
pediatric. Okay? So we are going to choose ketamine over atomidate for this patient. All right? So these are the three cases that you would choose ketamine over atomidate. All right? So what do we have for ketamine dose? Or would there ever be a reason you'd want to go for atomidate over ketamine? Yeah, if it doesn't meet one of these three criteria. Oh, okay. So any other time. So these any are the, other time. Yep, any other time, go with atomidate. Ah, I see. All okay. right, so just these three times, you'll opt for ketamine over the atomidate. Ketamine dose. Two, two milligrams per kilo. Two milligrams per kilo. All right, so where are we at? Our time? 50. 50. No, no, no. We're, like, so how much? 50 milligrams. Oh. 50 milligrams. Everybody agree? Yep. yep. How many milliliters is that? This is a trick question because there's like four different packaging of the ketamine right now. Uh, so, trick question, so I'm just going to not even throw this one at, out at you for that. Okay, so now we give them the ketamine. What's going to happen when we give ketamine? They're going to be unresponsive. They are going to become unresponsive. Are they paralyzed? No. no. Can you potentially pass an ET tube right now? Yes. yes. Do you want to? No. 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 Right? So they potentially could look completely unconscious, unresponsive. But yes, still have a gag reflex to the point where you stick a laryngoscope in there, and next thing you know, you got vomit all over the place. Okay? So basically, this causes the unconsciousness, but this does not cause paralysis. So we are to the point now, paralysis, we get to choose paralysis now. Right? We're there. Finally, get to paralyze somebody. Okay? What do we do now? Could we go back to the ketamine dose? You, you said two mix per kg. Why wasn't it four mix per kg? Uh, so the four is for IM. So okay. Remember, remember like, yep. if you're gotcha. channel, yep. like, boom, four. Oh, okay. That's yeah. what I remembered. Yep. And so that's, that's yeah. Because most of the time when you give ketamine, it's, it's for a combative patient, and it's going to be... Because there's only IM. three other criteria yeah. right. other than combative patient. Right. So, so you have ketamine for combative patient, and then this is your RSI criteria. Gotcha. Okay? All right, sucks. Nope, nope, nope. Are we ready to get sucks? Are you ready to paralyze? Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Hold on. I gotta make sure here. Pre-medicated. We've got our three minutes in on lidocaine. We've given our fentanyl. We just gave our ketamine. Did we? Did we get all this stuff like ready? Are we? Are we bagging? Yep. Yep. Tubes ready. Yep. Uh, what do we want to do to prevent regurgitation? What What technique do we want to use? Okay. Because what's gonna happen when we paralyze this person? What are they going to relax? Everything. Everything. Everything, right? So we're going to grab our cell maneuver. Wait, well, they. What was that? Remember our cell maneuver where you push on the. Thyroid membrane. Remember, push it back, collapse the esophagus. Oh, yeah, I thought it was just to help us see it. It helps you see it, but, but it also, because you're going to release all your sphincters. Oh, that's right. okay. that's a lot of your sphincters release when you paralyze. And so you're going to shut off. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so you want to shut off any ability for when you relax, so you don't want any of that uh, stomach contents to end up in your airway as you're getting ready to RSI somebody. Okay. As you're getting ready to do it. Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, sucks. We're just sucks. What's the full What's the full name of sucks? Sucks. Also known as sucks. Also known as <laughs> an ectomy. Yes. Okay. So there's multiple different names. Making sure that you know them. Dosing is. Two milligrams per kilo. So what are we at? Fifty. Fifty. Mix. Okay. How many milliliters is that? So you got two hundred. Two hundred. 200 milligrams and 10 milliliters. <coughs> 20, 20 to 1, 20 milligrams per milliliter. So it's two and a half. Okay, there we go. We're going two and a half. Whew. So that only took us 15 minutes to get to there. 
right? So are we still rapping? No. So there's a lot of crazy math that's going on and you're super stressed. So every lecture I see you guys at from this point forward, we are going to start off, you know how it was all fun with all those funny videos and stuff? Now we're ratcheting it up. It's all RSI dosing, okay? So you guys are going to have to figure out every criteria, every possibility of patient combination, and we're gonna, I'm going to throw out at the beginning of the day. We're just going to be like, all right, so this is your patient. You have a 50-year-old respiratory failure and dialysis patient. What meds are you going to go with? Go, all right? You're going to have five minutes to give me all the doses, all the concentrations, and everything, all right? So you guys are going to need to pay close attention to RSI uh, medications, all right? What was our automate dose? Point. 0 0.3 milligrams per kilo. All right, so going back to the sucks. So we get the sucks. What's going to happen when we get the sucks? Everything relaxes. We'll stop breathing. Everything relaxes. Mm. Yeah, no, it tenses up. Okay. Yeah. Deep so, does anybody know, has anybody heard of vesiculations? What's going to happen to the muscles? What? <laughs> Is this a depolarizing type med? What does it do? It depolarizes and then blocks. Right, so what happens when all the muscles at the same time depolarize? They tense up. Yeah. Right, so they get vesiculations, it's almost like twitching, okay? Usually lasts for about two to three seconds. They do this little twitching thing, and then it stops. And then you're like, hello, you all good? All right, one of the good ways to check a patient is to touch your eyelids, okay? Touch your eyelashes, sorry. You touch their eyelashes, most people don't like their eyelashes touched, right? So there's some sort of flicker, all right? The other thing to do is so you can lift their arm and it, the, the dead drop, okay? At that point, they're like, you're like, okay, person's paralyzed, cool, let's do this. And then you're like, oh wait, we forgot to check our bulb, we forgot to do this, oh, oh boy, we've got ahead of ourselves, right? No, you guys are awesome, you guys are totally prepared, you're ready to go. Okay, vesiculations happen, now what? Real quick question on the... Yeah, yeah. The when you get a sucks and the patient is doing the whole tense thing, how long does like the cortical happen, and does that have any bearing on what you're doing? This sucks. Or no. So, so basically, so this is why you're giving some of the lidocaine and the fentanyl is to help with the reduction of the ICP, to help with the medication administration. So when this person becomes completely paralyzed, it all their muscles are relaxed. Yeah. Basically, the, the choreo posture basically kind of goes away. And so then you're able to, they're completely flaccid, you can move, and that's why I was talking about the arm drop, you can do the arm drop. Would you anticipate a patient after 15 minutes of us discussing it, they still be in the core again? Uh, I, would, I would guess that you've probably transitioned to possibly to serve it. Because it's taking so long. Because you're taking so long. And we're killing them. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, um, sorry about your but, but the thing is, is it, they, they don't always go from the corticate to the cerebrate. It just gets a lot, a lot worse. Like they basically fetal position and they curl up, all right? Uh, but yeah, we're at, we're, we're at 20 minutes. But the good news is, is at 20 minutes, we finally got some sucks on board and we paralyzed the person. We're gonna make the patient. When? Now. Not until the hospital. Now? Are, are we done? No, we have to actually. I don't even know what to do at this point. They're awesome. Awesome. Some stuff, dude. Oh right, yeah, so you guys are awesome. You guys are amazing at your skills. You get this person innovative first try. Because you use perfect technique, up and away, no prying, teeth are all intact, corner of the room, boom, all on the shoulder. Right? We're good? Mm -hmm. Yeah? End title looks good. Sats start to come up a little bit. All right? Oh, yeah. Paralysis with cessation, zero. Right? So that is a 15 seconds from the time you give it until they are completely paralyzed, right? So this is a very rapid, you have to be ready when you push that sucks. It's go time when you push that sucks, all right? You can't be, okay, I'm gonna push the sucks, let me go over here and grab a couple more things and double check my tube and stuff like that. It's, it's like, hey, I got everything ready to go. Here is my patient's head, I'm in the airway seat. My tube is here, my laryngoscope is here, everything's here, okay. I'm ready, go ahead and push the sucks. Sucks goes in, boom, 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 they do the vesiculations, check the eyes, check the arm, okay, boom, and you go. It's legitimately that fast, so you have to be ready. Are we still running our BVM while we push that? Yes, push the you're sucks. running the BVM up to the point where I check the eyes, so after you give the ketamine, you're probably gonna be able to get an OPA in. 
more than likely you're gonna be able to pass an OPA on there. And so you're bagging and be like, okay, and yep, sucks is in, vesiculation, check the eye, we're good, okay. Take the BBM, take the OPA, and, have, and pull, pull the mask off. Boom, off it comes, you go in, you do your thing, you're awesome, you pass the tube, on it goes, check, you're good, end title, secure it, we're set. Yeah? Your paralytic's gonna wear off. Oh, it is, huh? Dang it. If only it fixed everything, right? What's that point? Do we know how long sets last? 10 minutes. Five to 10 minutes, okay. I wish it lasted 10 minutes every time. Um, we're talking more like, uh, I, I choose to shoot for the uh, three to five minute range for one sucks. Um, because uh, do you want to be, be caught behind? No. It's a bad thing. Uh, have you guys, uh, did they talk, I didn't watch all those videos, did they talk about the Curari Clef? about how as patients start to come out of sedation, good, yeah. they good. develop good. the RI clef. When you see that, you're like, no. Like, not yet, I'm not ready. <laughs> right? Uh, and so, yeah, it's you have to be prepared for it. All right? Uh, so you want to be ahead of that. You want to be ahead. You don't want to see the curare clef. You'll be like, OK, I'm awesome. I'm prepared. This is what I want to do. So we got five minutes. Whew. Protect the airway. Zero 15 seconds. This is our cell maneuver. All right? Get our innovation, pass it to proof of placement. Yep, we're good here. Post innovation management. Okay. We got five minutes here. Okay? Five minutes before that sucks wears off. Secure that airway. All right, it's secure. You don't want to lose it. Again. Nope. No. I want to draw no. my next to Yes. Sucks. Thank you. You want to be prepared. You don't want to see the Curare Clef, right? Because no. you were so awesome and prepared that you've got your end title stuff ready. So you, it's on there immediately. So you're sitting there and you're like, oh, hey, maybe we should go to the hospital. And you're driving along and all of a sudden you look down and you're like, oh, Lordy, help me, help me. Oh, what do I do now? Oh, that's not good. I know that's not good. Right? What do we draw up? What do we want to keep them under? Sucks. 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 Mm. I like the idea. So we tend to lean away from double dose in the paralytic. The only time we really double dose a paralytic is if we don't get the tube the first time. Okay? So most of the time we go with post sedation meds being uh, so we have fentanyl and does anybody know what that is? Percent. Oh, perfect. Oh. So we really lean towards percent. What does percent do? Is it both? Like, or sorry, do you do both? Yeah, so, so you can you can you can combine these, you can mix them, you can. It's not either or. No. Like, so most of the time, what we do is we start with the percent, and our dose per percent is. I heard it. Zero point one milligram per kilogram. Everybody agree? Everybody agree? Yes or no? If you don't, if you don't know, if you don't know, it's just best to say yeah and then be like, no, you're wrong. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so that is the correct dose. All right, so how much does this kid get? 2.25. 2.5 milligrams. Two. Two. No. So I like I like your thought process. So with RSI, RSI makes things completely different. So with RSI, your max becomes a six milligram dose. Give them the three then. Oh geez, oh geez. So you have a six milligram max dose. So would, what would a hundred kilo patient get? Six. But I need 10. We get six. But I need 10. But you get six. But it says six. It says six because that's the max, right? Yep. Right, so that's a common trick that gets thrown at you guys. Be like, oh, well, you have a 90 kilo patient. What are you going to do? Six. Six is the most you can get. Okay? Yeah. Under is this a pediatric dose thing? Yes. Oh, it's probably, of course. Is it under RSI? Yes. Okay, give it to me. Lane County Protocols. Oh, remember, um, Lincoln Protocols is not the, the Bible. That was not the adult be all. I get that. Yeah. But What's it say? Two? It says two milligrams. Uh, two, up two to two milligrams max. Medscape was 
a little higher than that. But I haven't found six yet. All right, so looking under the adult. It is six under, it is, it's six under, six under the adult. So uh, we'll go with what it says there. We'll go with the two then. Two, four, B. Unless you get in the order. Oh, in the order lets you do whatever you want. Correct. Yeah, you can do whatever you want in that case. Okay, so Pete is two, adult is six. All right. So is this an adult? Eight-year-old. No. Eight Eight-year-old. Eight is it pediatric? Is it They're not like little. Like a little. Well, where's the <coughs> cutoff for pediatric? Pediatric. What is pediatric dose cutoff? Twelve. Hair under the armpit. So puberty. Puberty is the age of cutoff for pediatric to an adult. Okay. So you I was just going to say so for some people. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're back to our post-station meds. Still waiting. So let's get back to, uh, you brought up something about Versed. Say it again. Amnesic. Amnesic. Do you want somebody remembering that you knocked out their entire respiratory drive? No. Absolutely not. Ah, yeah. oh, man. Yeah. So the best part about having Derek in here is he can verify some of my crazy stories. Uh, so, you know what you want to talk about? Yes. The, the gal on the beach with Reese and the No, I don't. No, I was thinking of something else. Oh, no, we have, we got, I got three of them. We got three of them I got to tell you guys today. Okay, Just because Derek's here because this is the best time. I told you guys, next time Derek and I were together, three stories, three classic stories. So this is the first one. Gal, uh, down on the beach, was like, uh, 